thank you and uh, I'd like uh, to thank all attendees for coming uh, that early and uh, thanks to uh, Professor Magda Hamid, head of the uh, Egyptian Society of uh, Cardiology for inviting me for this important uh, collaborative CME activity with the European Society uh, of Cardiology. Uh, my presentation today will be about the clinical interplay between uh, diabetes and heart failure. <coughs> if you didn't go, I think you have to go. This is uh, Siwa Oasis. I think it's one of the most uh, 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 nice viewing and uh, camping if you are interested in. Uh, something that uh, must to go in Egypt. Uh, again, thank you for European Society of Cardiology and Egyptian Society of Cardiology. And I'll start with this uh, quote for Socrates. Uh, you don't see uh, by your eyes what you don't know by your mind. So you have to know first by your mind then to see or to elicit changes. So if we look at this, uh, I would say, uh, picture, this, it looks like a scorpion, isn't it? Uh, this is the head, a very big one, and this is the tail, a very minor one. And if we uh, focus on that, we will find this is the diagram of the most common causes of death worldwide. And the head of this scorpion is the cardiovascular uh, disease. Cardiovascular disease is responsible for uh, many deaths worldwide, and the first killer worldwide, uh, this was at uh, 2000. Uh, 16 WHO data. So uh, let's uh, start with some brainstorming questions. And before uh, narrating these questions, if you can answer all these questions correctly, you don't need to attend this meeting, I think. Uh, so number one, uh, should a diabetic patient with heart failure be treated uh, differently from a diabetic patient without heart failure for safety reasons? Should a heart failure patient with diabetes be treated with specific anti-diabetic agent that proves a favorable heart failure outcome uh, in addition to being safe and effective in hyperglycemia management? And finally, should a heart failure patient, and this is coming back to the question of Professor Samah Shaheen, should a heart failure patient without diabetes be treated with a specific anti-diabetic agent that proves a favorable heart failure outcome in the absence of diabetes. So those are very important questions to start with this presentation. And yes or no. Uh, do they have common etiologists? I mean diabetes and heart failure. Uh, do they share some common pathophysiological changes? Do they affect each other prognostically? Do anti-heart failure therapies affect diabetes and the reverse? Do anti-diabetic drugs affect heart failure or not? So this is the uh, frame of this presentation. So let's start. Do they have common etiologists? And the clear answer, which is straightforward, is no. They don't have uh, a, a common etiology for both of them. However, uh, they share uh, some uh, pandemic or endemic criteria. Both are global. Uh, endemic diseases worldwide. Uh, this data is 2017. More than or about 30 million in USA, they have uh, type 2 uh, diabetes and about 7 million they have heart failure. In heart failure, the prevalence of diabetes ranges between 10% to 47% and uh, in hospitalized patients, it's more than 40% more than 40% of hospitalized heart failure patients, they have diabetes. And in diabetes, prevalence of heart failure is still large, more than four-folds of the general population from 10 to 22 persons. So uh, uh, they share the global health economy problems. Uh, these are the most uh, um, famous, I would say, uh, observational trials in cardiovascular disease. And uh, on top of them, you can uh, realize the Framingham uh, trial with uh, high incidence of diabetes in patients with heart failure. So they share some uh, common uh, uh, endemic areas. Do they share common, uh, some common pathophysiological changes? And astonishing enough, yes, they share. To start with diabetes, 
me may lead to uh, diabetic cardiomyopathy and may share in the prognosis and the uh, evolution of heart failure in patients with or without ischemic heart disease. Hyperglycemia, insulin resistance, hyperinsulinemia might lead directly to coronary artery disease, ischemic cardiomyopathy via inflammation, dyslipidemia, and helial dysfunction, and indirectly by autonomic dysfunction, abnormal calcium handling, increased fatty acid saturation, uh, utilization, RAS activation, and LVH to diabetic cardiomyopathy. So there is some sort of interaction between, sorry, between diabetes and heart failure. What about the cardiac metabolic alterations in patients with heart failure? Those two uh, 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 processes almost are the same. So there are some cardiac metabolic changes in diabetes and in heart failure, and there might be some sort of minor differences, increased free fatty acids, but it's more increased in diabetes, increased ketones, which is there in heart failure as well, increased glucose level in either diabetics or in some pre-diabetic heart failure patients, lipotoxicity, glucotoxicity, and this leads to different cascades which lead to uh, amelioration or deterioration of heart failure. So hyperglycemia, oxidative stress, inflammation, autonomic dysfunction, disturbed insulin signaling, disturbed renin-angiotensin aldosterone system, cytosolic calcium trafficking and abnormal calcium handling, all those uh, changes which happen in diabetic patients with heart failure lead finally to myocardial uh, dysfunction and more deterioration of patients with heart failure. So they do share some uh, pathophysiological changes as well. So ATP depletion, ischemia, oxidative stress in patients with diabetes mellitus and heart failure lead to some molecular changes in the level of the myocyte and neurohormonal and the uh, minor molecular changes like uh, decreased contractility, uh, increased basement membrane abnormalities, renin angiotensin uh, system stimulation, and decreased beta receptors number and sensitivity. All this leads to structural and functional changes, which will end up by more deterioration of heart failure again and again. And uh, if you see the systemic interdependence of heart failure on type 2 diabetes, this is the morphology of the cardiac myocytes in patients with diabetes, left ventricular hypertrophy, more fibrosis, uh, uh, mitochondrial uh, dysfunction, uh, uh, metal matrix metalloproteases uh, uh, 9 activation, and all this lead to uh, the heart failure. If we see under electron microscopy, basement membrane changes, uh, uh, some sort of more fibrosis, macrophage infiltration inside the cardiac uh, myocytes, which lead to more deterioration, again, of heart failure. So we have uh, two phenotypes in patients with heart failure and diabetes. We have the eccentric uh, phenotype with reduced ejection fraction. We have concentric uh, phenotype with preserved ejection fraction. Both are diabetic hearts. Both could be directly via ischemic heart disease or indirectly via the effect of hyperglycemia and other metabolic abnormalities of heart failure. So this is part of the game and the interplay between diabetes mellitus and heart failure. The major weapon, as we all know, of diabetes mellitus is atherosclerosis, which is rapidly accelerating in patients with diabetes and heart failure rather than only diabetics without heart failure. And if we go to, do they affect each other prognostically or not? The answer is in three slides, the three coming slides. So this one, people with diabetes are up to 4x more likely to develop cardiovascular disease than people without diabetes, including heart failure, of course. And more than two-thirds of death in diabetes is due to cardiovascular cause, including heart failure as well. This a very large uh, uh, observational program uh, and registry in the UK called UK Caliber Program involving data of about 2 million uh, uh, control patients versus about 35,000 patients with diabetes. And they found that heart failure is the second initial manifestation of cardiovascular disease in type 2 diabetes. LV dysfunction is common either systolic dysfunction, diastolic dysfunction, or both in patients with heart failure and diabetes. And actually, within five years of diagnosis of uh, diabetes, 
there is an evidence of left ventricular dysfunction in more than 68%, uh, about 70% of patients. What about anti-heart failure therapies and uh, diabetes? Do anti-heart failure or heart failure therapy affect diabetes or not? Generally speaking, the guidelines uh, directed medical treatment should be applied for all patients with heart failure and diabetes. However, the use of diuretics like thiazides and loop diuretics should be cautious because they impair uh, the glucose metabolism and might deteriorate the status of diabetes. However, they are not the popular uh, uh, diuretics at the moment in patients with heart failure. Uh, those are um, uh, uh, the major trials of evidence-based anti-failure uh, treatment, anti-heart failure treatment, and in patients with diabetes, they are still very effective as equal to patients without diabetes mellitus. So this is the final question. Uh, I think one of the most important nowadays because of the row of the uh, uh, running trials and coming trials of Paragon and uh, Daba heart failure. Uh, do anti-diabetic therapies affect heart failure? The answer clearly is yes, they do. Um, however, we have to focus in patients with heart failure to uh, control diabetes status and decrease the level of hemoglobin A1C because this will decrease the uh, cardiovascular uh, complications uh, caused of, uh, because of diabetes. So let's start with bioguanides or metformin. Metformin is one of the very popular anti-diabetic drugs. You will find it in all EDA uh, and uh, uh, European Society uh, of Diabetes uh, Management as the first one to start with until this 2019 guidelines. So metformin associated with better short-term and long-term prognosis in patients with heart failure. So it's a safe drug in patients with heart failure, but without renal impairment, of course. It's associated with reduced mortality of heart failure, and this is uh, majorly uh, due to reduced cardiac hypertrophy by uh, adenosine monophosphate kinase uh, uh, mediated repression. Uh, this is one of the theories how metformin is uh, safe and maybe uh, uh, useful in patients with heart failure. What about insulin? There are some controversial data. Some observational trials suggested the relationship between insulin use and heart failure risk, so pro prognosis or progression of heart failure. However, cardiovascular outcomes with long-acting insulin uh, analogs don't demonstrate increased cardiovascular events, so we can tell that it's rather neutral. What about sulfonylureas? They have a bad reputation with post-MI patients. They have a bad reputation with heart failure. However, no definite cardiovascular outcome trial to evaluate cardiovascular safety of sulfonylureas versus placebo or other diabetic agents. However, meta-analysis reports no increased cardiovascular risk with sulfonylureas versus metformin, but there was some retrospective uh, uh, cohort study reported an increased cardiovascular risk in patients with sulfonylureas. So, uh, uh, sulfonylureas, I wouldn't say it's safe in patients with heart failure because there is some sort of incomplete data about the use in patients with heart failure. Thiazolidine diones, clearly speaking, they are contraindicated in patients with heart failure because of their effect of sodium and water uh, retention. Reports on effect of thiazolidine diones on cardiac safety are conflicting. However, the more negative impact is more than the positive impact of thiazolidine diones in patients with heart failure, and they shouldn't be used in patients with heart failure. What about GLB-1 receptor antagonist? Meta-analysis reports no increased risk in heart failure or hospitalization. Uh, one of the, uh, the meta-analysis reported modest improvement in heart failure status, so at least they are neutral and safe to be used in patients with heart failure. What about DDB-4s? We have one drug, which is saxagleptin, which proved increased uh, uh, hospitalization and uh, uh, bad or negative cardiovascular outcomes in patients with uh, diabetes. So, uh, however, other uh, DDB4s are to some extent uh, neutral or safe to be used in patients with heart failure. Did you miss something? Yes? It's uh, 
uh, SGLT2 inhibitors. And I'll start with this tweet uh, from the European Society of Cardiology. Uh, one colleague from uh, uh, the team of uh, Professor John McMurray uh, in uh, 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 Glasgow Royal Infirmary Hospital. Dear Team Diabetes, please, may we share your drug dabagliflozin? Can regards all the cardiologists at the European Society of Cardiology Congress. This was like a funny uh, tweet regarding the effect of SGLT2 inhibitors in patients with heart failure and diabetes mellitus. Uh, SGLT2 uh, improves cardiovascular outcomes, uh, risk factors, weight reduction, reduction in systolic blood pressure, and improved lipid profile in patients with diabetes mellitus. Uh, EMBA rigged outcome trial reported reduction in cardiovascular mortality and hospitalization from heart failure using EMBA griflozin. The same for uh, CANA griflozin. Meta-analysis of cardiovascular events in type 2 diabetes on DABA griflozin reported no increased risk for cardiovascular events. And there are two large trials of dabagliflozin in patients with heart failure and diabetes and in patients with heart failure regardless the uh, presence or absence of diabetes. I'll go very quickly. This is the mechanism of action, natriuresis and glucosuria, glycosuria, and both will lead to uh, death and cardiovascular death reduction, reduction of non-fatal MI and reduction of heart failure hospitalization. This is the DECLARE study at which uh, uh, more than 17,000 patients with heart failure and reduced ejection fraction or uh, diabetes mellitus with high atherosclerotic uh, uh, cardiovascular disease risk, dabagliflozin reduced heart failure hospitalization in type 2 diabetes with high cardiovascular risk regardless of ejection fraction. And in patients with reduced ejection fraction, this reduction was magnificent and was associated with cardiovascular death mortality reduction as well. And we can see from uh, those uh, coming slides the huge difference between the placebo versus DABA as add-on treatment in patients with heart failure and reduced ejection fraction at this dotted red, red lines. In the major composite endpoint, which is cardiovascular death hospitalization due to heart failure and heart failure admission requiring intravenous inotropes. Actually, this is why the new guidelines of the uh, European Society of Cardiology on management of diabetes mellitus in patients with atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease prefer to use in naive patients or patients already on metformin to start with SGLT2 uh, uh, inhibitors. What's new? About two weeks ago, launched in uh, the American Heart Association, the DABA heart failure trial. And this is a completely new concept using pure anti-diabetic drug in management of patients with heart failure, regardless presence or absence of diabetes. Uh, they have uh, 4,750 patients, half uh, uh, and 50% and 50% using placebo versus dabagliflozin on top of the standard care anti-heart failure treatment. And the results were magnificent, significant reduction of Composite in the point, cardiovascular death hospitalization or urgent heart failure hospitalization requiring uh, intravenous inotropes, reduction of cardiovascular events, and even worsening of renal function was not that bad with patients on dabagliflozin. These are the important uh, slides of this study enforcing the effect of the positive effect of dabagliflozin in improving cardiovascular outcomes in patients with heart failure. Actually, in this trial, about 40% of patients, they have diabetes, and they were equally distributed in both arms of placebo and drug trial. Uh, so no matter having or not having diabetes uh, will affect the result of DABAG, Reflosin, and primary uh, endpoint. And if we can, uh, uh, we have about, okay, about one minute. So these are four scenarios of patients with heart failure and diabetes, you can clearly see that metformin is in top of all, except in patients with impaired kidney function. SGLT2 inhibitors uh, in the three of them, except in patients uh, with significant renal impairment as well. Insulin is there. Uh, so uh, my take home message is that uh, this one slide uh, explaining how diabetes and heart failure interact at the level of the pathophysiology and the level of medical treatment as well.
this is the only slide that I want you to think of when you go home. Diabetes uh, via hyperglycemia, insulin resistance, hyperinsulinemia can cause directly or indirectly heart failure. Thank you very much.